Everywhere you look, everywhere you go, every moment of every day, from the rise of the dawn to the setting of the sun, from the first cup of coffee to the last bedtime story, at work, in school, among friends, and with your family, during trials and storms, triumphs, and victories, on your worst day, and in your finest moment, He is near. For our God dwells with us and abides in us. His presence surrounds us, and His Spirit is inescapable. He loves us with an unimaginable affection and cares for us with an unfathomable passion. Everywhere you look, everywhere you go, God is near. Well, good morning, everyone. Warm welcome to everyone that's here with us this morning and to everyone joining with us online. It's great to have you with us. Well, I want to begin this morning by reading from Psalm 100, verses 1 to 5. Oops, that's okay. <laughs> Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues to all generations. And that's just what we're here for, to give thanks and praise his name. So I invite you to stand as we sing our first song. That's what we came here for.
into a time of prayer. Let us give our all to God. Let him take over our lives and breathe the Holy Spirit into our hearts.
our all to you. We are here to worship you, Lord. You are the reason we have come together to give you praise, to give our hearts to you and to hear your word. We pray that you will open our hearts and our minds to what you want us to hear today. Lord, that we may use your guidance and your love to become more like you. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord and worshipping together today? Thank you to the worship team uh, for leading us into our service today. Well, we're delighted to um, have Colonel Rodney Walters uh, with us today. Uh, he'll be sharing with us shortly and over the word of God as well. So very warm welcome, Rodney. And uh, it's always good um, to be in Tassie, is it not? I hope. So um, even though it's a little bit cool this morning, but a lovely clear day, uh, he's already been sharing. So... We can be blessed uh, wherever we are in God's kingdom. I do give apologies from Lieutenant Colonel Greg Morgan, who is just not able uh, to be with us today. Uh, just some circumstances preventing, uh, prevented that. So we do think of him and the family at this time. So some announcements. Uh, don't forget we're into screening of The Chosen Season 2 now on Wednesday evenings. Uh, so we started last Wednesday with Episode 1 there. So it'll be Episode 2 this week. That makes sense, doesn't it? So 6pm Wednesday for a bit of light meal and a food and then uh, the episode will screen there from 6.30pm. So if you haven't seen this series before um, and you're not doing anything on a Wednesday, I really would encourage you to come along and uh, share. There's probably a group of 10 or 12 uh, just sharing uh, over that. So um, there's that opportunity there. This week is the Salvo Sleep Out. Sorry, I didn't say that with a lot of enthusiasm, did I? <laughs> Thursday night, uh, there'll be a few of us sleeping out, but I'm um, probably... About 35, 40, I think, are registered from community as well. And I think the um, leading team so far is Anthony Kwong from Singwa Graces. His team, they've raised almost $9,000 uh, so far, which supports the Street to Home program around the state. But obviously, the Launceston fundraising supports it here in Launceston. So if you do want to uh, sponsor, um, I've, you know, I've been spruiking Team Reeve, so Anita and Lily, who's sleeping out for the first time this year. Uh, you'll find their page on Salvo Sleep Out Tasmania or somewhere. Or um, if you, they're not here today, but if you track them down, I'm sure you can give them some money to sponsor them and encourage them that way. August the 10th, 2pm to 5pm. Don't forget bands in the round. Uh, the poster is up the back where you can scan and go to the ticket site to purchase your tickets there. Uh, there'll be the four uh, local bands participating, the RSL band, City of Launceston band, City of Burnie and the Olveston Municipal Band. So our Salvo friends coming through from the northwest coast uh, there with the Burnie, City of Burnie band being very active in the core there in these days. So uh, the event's also up on their Facebook page. That includes afternoon tea uh, for your ticket price. So 2pm to 5pm, uh, some of those bands sharing. And then mass bands all together on the end, conducted by staff band master Ken Waterworth. That'd be about 120, 130 playing together or something like that, won't it, Ian? So something of that number, I guess. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it'd be a sight to behold. Uh, and the last announcement today is just for the men. Ooh, we don't often have just an announcement just for the men. But on uh, Saturday, September the 14th at 8.30am, there is a faith and fellowship breakfast uh, that will be held here, probably out in the Burroughs Hall. Uh, we're doing this in partnership with the Blackstone Christian Centre. They hold uh, regular men's breakfasts uh, at their centre there, and we're going to do this one in partnership. Uh, the pastor there, Scott Hudson, um, has been coming in for many years volunteering in our breakfast, and the church there do financially support our breakfast as well from time to time. So uh, this is a, a real good um, partnership in the kingdom of God that's developed there. So the cost will be $10 per person, just to help cover costs there, Saturday, September the 14th, 8.30 a.m., and our guest speaker will be Michael Ferguson. Uh, yes, so Deputy Premier, but uh, he's, as we know, he is a follower of God, so he's coming to share from the aspect of faith in uh, some way and how his faith uh, upholds him in all that he does and in his life. So please put that one in the diary and uh, let me know if you're coming along, uh, just so we can start to confirm numbers there. Thank you. We'll continue in the giving of our tithes and offerings in worship, and then the songsters will share with us. Thank you.
Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us, for your unfailing provision for our daily needs, whether they are physical, mental or spiritual. We thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross for our sins. And we thank you for those blessings we enjoy each day as being part of this country, this city. And so we've brought our gifts this morning. Some have given them here today, some by electronic means. We pray you'll bless the givers, you'll bless the gifts, that they may increase the power of the gospel and people will come to know Jesus as a result of our sacrificial giving. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Yes, thank you to the songsters. Invite Jan, or is it Jan and Paul, or just Jan? So Jan and Paul, just to come and share with us. As you know, uh, recently they spent six weeks on the Big Island, or the mainland as we call it, um, travelling around where God had prepared, but where God led them as well uh, with Aussie PGs. And uh, they just wanted to share a little on that today. Thank you. Morning, folks. Hi, everyone. Well, uh, as most of you know, yes, we did travel for um, well, almost five weeks, it was, up through Victoria, New South Wales and Queensland to visit Aussie PG's leaders, um, Australian praying grandparents' leaders in these different states. We uh, hadn't met most of them. We, we stayed. We had a wonderful time, I have to say. We had an absolutely fantastic trip. Both thoroughly enjoyed it. Paul will talk in a minute. I've got a few things to say first, <laughs> <laughs> as usual. <laughs> Um, but really, it was so good. We just loved it. We enjoyed meeting all these different beautiful godly grandparents that were running groups in these different states. And uh, we stayed with 10 different couples. Um, we were away 34 nights. And for 19 nights, we stayed in people's homes. And that was actually lovely. It was really nice. Um, two or three nights with some people. But we got to know them really well and uh, had times of prayer with them. We encouraged them, they encouraged us greatly and um, that was just absolutely lovely, that meeting these different ones and opportunities were given to us to speak in three different denominations on different Sundays. So the first one was Toowoomba Wesleyan Methodist and we spoke there and uh, shared about Australian Aussie PGs, Australian praying grandparents, and we gave out, um, altogether we gave away 200 brochures, not just at that church, but while we were away, we gave away 200 of the brochures, all about Aussie PGs, and we also gave away 200 of the Sorting Out Prayer booklet on forgiveness. And we did find, as uh, people asked us to share on the issue of forgiveness as well, that that was actually a real key thing, that God was wanting grandparents to get over things and get on with it so that they can pray more powerfully for their families. And so, because all of us, as we, um, whatever age, things happen, don't they, in our lives, and sometimes it can cause a block. And so we found that that message was actually a key message to go alongside the praying grandparents. And so that's why we ended up giving away 200 of those as well and uh, shared uh, quite a few times about that. So I've got a few there. If anyone ha doesn't know what I'm talking about, come and get one later. You're very welcome. And uh, so we, the first one was t Wesleyan Methodist and then um, Port Macquarie Salvation Army in New South Wales. And we had a wonderful time with the Salvos there with Lee and David Palmer, retired area officers, and met their group and shared at their church and then also in Victoria, Croydon Baptist Church, and that was lovely as well. A lot of grandparents have come up. There's a lot to do with follow-up. A lot of people popped their names down uh, for the newsletter and took the brochures, and there's a lot of follow-up to do now, which will, will be good. My, I don't mind doing that, so that's good. Also, there were opportunities to speak at Vision Radio. We had an interview there, which God just opened the door. We weren't expecting it. We went to have a look through the, the station. And the chap that had interviewed me in November said, oh, let's just do another one. So we just had to be willing to say yes as we went along. And so that was wonderful. And the same happened with Gosford Rama radio station. And in, an opportunity opened up. So we said yes and had an interview there. And, of course, there's follow-up coming through from those too, which is lovely. So I've probably talked a fair bit, so Paul, did you want to share something? <laughs> well, thanks for giving me a chance. <laughs> we make a good team. <laughs> um, look, we want to thank you too for praying for us. Um, Karen, could I just have that first slide? Um, we, we drove not as far as Rob and um, Sandra, but we did about 4,500 k's in our old um, camper van, and it didn't miss a beat, so I really want to thank you for praying for it. Um, we were just a little bit apprehensive, you know, when you're doing big distances, but it went, it drove really well. 
and uh, we were protected a number of times from close misses, if, if you know, well, you know. <laughs> Travelling up on the mainland on the motorways and freeways, there are people weaving and carrying on, and it's um, it's a little bit stressful. But we got through, and a couple of times we knew that God had just been there to make sure we didn't get involved in an accident. So it was a really wonderful trip. We really did love it. And um, while we were there, next one to Karen, we uh, caught up with Damien and uh, um, uh, Beck. Beck Blunt, that we're here for a number of years until just recently. They're now up at WEC International Headquarters in Brisbane and um, living or looking at helping to look after a magnificent building that they have up there, that they're living in units that have been designed for the students and staff and uh, still waiting to get into Jordan. As you know, they've got a real heart to uh, go as missionaries to Jordan and they're still... Because of the uncertainty in uh, the Middle East, it's very difficult to get there. So they're spending their time up. They're doing some training up there and doing a bit of um, uh, visitation around churches in Brisbane and uh, around Queensland. And they all seem they love. And uh, this next one, and there's a little... Emma. Yeah. Emma and Lucas. And uh, they're having a great time, although they're lonely. And the whole family said, look, they really miss everyone here. So they were really grateful that this congregation took them, took them in and really made them feel part of the, the Salvation Army here. So they're really missing us and um, just want to send their love to you. And uh, just last one, and this was the group at Port Macquarie. They have got a beautiful group of praying grandparents there and they all send their love too. And, uh, um, they haven't got a songster brigade. They do have a band, which was really nice and refreshing. <laughs> so we had a great time there. So we just want to thank you for your prayers and your support and uh, just let you know that quite a number of groups have started as a result of that trip and um, we've now got 81 groups around Australia, which is just amazing so far. Yes, Jen's got a lot of follow-up and she's hoping for even more. <laughs> uh, but it was really great to be able to share with people around Australia, um, up the East Coast and to see what they're doing about praying for the next generation and just really, there are a lot of them are believing and have had prophetic words that God is going to move in the young people of that generation and there will be revival and it will start with them. So we're really excited and just encourage you here. We thank you for your, the groups in this church and just encourage you that God is doing things. Okay. God is good. Sounds like they, the hundreds not too far away now. But yep, hundred groups from ones yeah, from that vision of one starting here to have hundred groups. The yeast through the dough in the kingdom of God just sort of springs to mind from the scripture. Yeah. Well, let me invite Rodney up. Rodney's um, going to share a little bit uh, about some mission things or the questions that I throw at him. I've, I've been sitting with my four questions. They're all sort of questions without notice. I said, do you want to answer some questions? Just when he rolled in this morning, he said, yeah, well, we'll give it a go. <laughs> so I'll start with an easy one, though, and I know this is just a um, quick trip to Tassie on this occasion, but what do you love about Tassie, or do you have a favourite spot in Tassie? And you are allowed to say somewhere other than Launceston, just because you're here. We'll let you. <laughs> well, it's interesting, because uh, since coming back from overseas, I've only been to Tasmania, I think, twice or three times, and the other two times were Hobart. But yesterday I had opportunity to drive to Richmond, to Port Arthur, and then come up uh, the coast road to Launceston. It was absolutely beautiful. I love mountains. I love country driving. I love God's creation. So no matter where I am in the world, I just appreciate how God has set a place. Early this morning I got up and I went up to the lookout, whether it's the only lookout, but I went up to the lookout and climbed up the... A tower and just looked around and again saw something of God's wonderful creation in Launceston and especially um, the fact that it was four degrees. It was so crisp, so beautiful, so clear. And then the clouds started to come. So I'm sorry if I brought them. So apologies right up front. But I think every place, I don't think uh, I'd be wrong if I said there's just one place ever. Uh, but I just appreciate God's creation. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Many beautiful spots in the world, but we are blessed to live where we, we do here in this part of God's creation. Well, uh, the, um, 
portfolio leads for the Territory are over visiting at the moment. Uh, that is part of Rodney's reason for visit. But you are the Secretary for Communications? Something like that. Yeah, yes. so for the uninitiated, which is probably most of us in the room, what does that mean? Well, now we've just done a restructure, but uh, prior to the restructure, it was public relations, government relations, media, internal comms, fundraising, and I possibly have missed something else, but there's something else in there. Uh, media, internal comms, yeah, the brand. I knew I had the one more, one more, yes. And then we all collaborate. So now there is four, so there's fundraising, internal comms, brand, and external communications. And so that then means all the work is under specific uh, departments. So just a small role there, isn't it? <laughs> most, of the, most of those portfolio lead roles are small roles. <laughs> no, not really, no. So I'm sure um, all our leaders always appreciate our prayer support uh, yeah, for absolutely. all that they need to cover and need to be across in these days. But of course, um, we don't just arrive in a role. I know it's probably been a long journey with God across the years and I must confess, I haven't listened to it yet, but I know you were recently interviewed on the Stories of Hope podcast by Bryce Davies, so perhaps just share a little bit on how God has brought you to this point and, um, yeah, sort of where God has been across the years, some of the yeah, key points there on that. So, yeah. Thank you, Roderick. Um, in a couple of months, I'll be 40 years since uh, Wendy and I were commissioned as officers. So we've been around a long time and we've seen a few things. Um, and in our officership, we've had opportunity to plant new corps. We've had opportunity to be divisional youth secretaries, command youth secretaries, territorial youth secretaries. We've had opportunities to be divisional secretaries and uh, divisional commanders. I think one of the things that I loved in my officership was being with people. From being a divisional commander to being chief secretary in Eastern Europe, to being a territorial uh, commander in Eastern Europe and then uh, territorial commander in Singapore, Malaysia, Myanmar with Thailand. Uh, the opportunities to be with people of the nations and to hear their story and to see them come to faith, to help as the Salvation Army does with the issues and the needs of the times and how can we resource that, how can we come alongside people to help them help themselves in a way that offers hope for a future. And so uh, some have been with us in our early days. Uh, in 1993, Wendy and I, with our two children, went to St. Petersburg, Russia, uh, to help the Salvation Army commence the work. And uh, the Sydney Saab songsters, songsters came across, and David and Jill were part of that, uh, to Russia with love. They came and shared what was a worry for me to start off with. How would English singers minister in a Russian environment? but it was just a God-blessing, spirit-ordained thing. And how he translated the hearts of the people into the lives. We saw many people come to salvation and hope because of that. So, yeah, I, and, and it was our choice to come back to Australia. Both our fathers died while we were overseas and we lost two grandchildren while we were overseas. Uh, we have seven grandchildren, we have uh, two children and their partners, all healthy and well and great. But our kids did say, after 10 years away, will you come home and have more than just a couple of days with us? Because they got used to the phone, but what about being with them? So we felt, uh, yes, we could have taken another international appointment, but we felt God just gave us a piece to say, come home. So we came home and within a couple of days my mum died, which was beautiful just to be alongside her and to hear her say thank you for being there and to, uh, for the family to say thank you for doing the service. Um, and now my wife's mum is very low and so we've had opportunity just to minister there. So God in this 18 months we've been back has just been blessing us abundantly and getting to see new places. First time being in Launceston, Hobart and getting to see God's people and to share and hear and just to appreciate how God does his work amongst us in so many different places. No, I kept going, so I'm not I'm in the trouble either. <laughs> no, no, it's all good and it's lovely to hear. And uh, just the last question I've got, uh, look, we're all aware there are challenges in front of the Salvation Army in these days, but I want to ask you a question about there's also great opportunities in front Absolutely. of us. So 
what stirs your heart for the opportunities that are still in front of the Salvation Army in Australia or what, who God is still calling us to be as his people in these days? Very good question. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's all just ponder that for a moment. <laughs> Well, I think one of the incredible things is we are all the years have made us. And um, George Carpenter said that when he was made general. And the Salvation Army has been built and has an incredible heritage. And we're known in governments, we're known in communities. It's to actually still be the Salvation Army. People don't expect us to be just a social work. The governments don't even expect us just to be a social work. They expect us to be the Salvation Army, a Christian faith-based organization. Movement, I'd like to say, but they call us organization. Uh, and so, where we are, 10,000 employees across Australia, um, I forget how many, 40, 60,000 soldiers. Uh, and yet the work in the name of the Salvation Army is phenomenal. And just recently, we concluded the Red Shield Appeal and with all the organisations in Australia, uh, we uh, receive above what anybody else could have done. Now, that's not because we deserve it. It's because God sees the need that the Salvation Army is going to provide into the future, that he needs us. One of the challenges is we have to rely on employees for so much of our work, and we need our people to rise up and say, I'll do this. I'll commit to doing service for the Salvation Army, to be his hands, his feet, his lips, his ears, his eyes in ministry. We shouldn't be abdicating. We should be saying to our kids, get a, get a degree that will help you in mission and ministry. Be uh, uh, an evangelist. Learn about the gospel. Learn about what Jesus has done. And, and share that story. You don't have to be all the other things. Share the gospel. It is transformative, and that's what the country needs today. With all the issues it's going through, it needs a people that will stand up for Jesus and be counted. Yeah. Hallelujah. I mean, I was inspired. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Inspired in the spirit, though, when you hear godly people speak, the spirit speaks into our souls and just, you know, encourages us to be all that he's called us to be. So thank you. We look forward to hearing more as you preach from the word of God, share from the word of God in a few moments' time. Will you thank Rodney? Thank you. Ian's going to share the scripture with us, and then we'll sing again before we open the word. Thank you. Reading from Luke 19, 1 to 10. Excuse me. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he couldn't see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he's gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to, to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything... I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. May God bless his reading. Well, when I was choosing songs for this morning, I always find I come back to this particular one. And I feel after Rodney just talking then, it's um, very appropriate. I speak Jesus. And I think it's because it reflects our desire to share Jesus with others. It describes our yearning to see Jesus everywhere, in the dark places and from the mountaintops. So I invite you to stand. 
It's so good to be with you today. I don't take that for granted. I don't take uh, sharing the gospel for granted. And I've been praying for uh, the Morgan family. And I know Greg would love to be here. And I think there's someone from the bridal party right here. And they they were going to have a go. And at any rate, but I'll make sure I have a go at Greg so I can do that, you know, in Christian love, of course. Um, But it's so good to be here, and I wish Wendy could be here with me, but of course we have different appointments, and so she's not allowed to travel with me all the time. Uh, But uh, I am so thrilled to be here, and thank you, Roderick, for your kind, warm welcome. And for each one who I've had opportunity to greet, thank you for your warm welcome. For those who I haven't had opportunity, thank you for not greeting me yet, but I will (laughs) greet you. I mean, I'm so sorry. 
I'll catch that a little bit later. Okay. It's nice to meet you and it's nice to be in the house of the Lord today. I want to share with you a story, an account. A man, a tree, and a strange request. How many of you know this story? How many of you know the song now? Is that yes? Well, no. Yeah, any anyway. rate. Uh, so you can tell me. I don't need to do any more. But there's so many important things about this account that I felt it important to share with you today. Because I think uh, we discount people in society. I think we discount people of all, for so, all sorts of reasons. And this man, Zacchaeus, I think was discounted. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I think he was discounted. He was short. Now, some people do that, don't they? If you're a short person, they go, short. There was even a song about, don't want no short people around here. I don't know how that ever got out. I don't know how it got on the hit parade, but it did. But you know, what's the difference in short or tall? Well, I can tell you as I travel on a plane, Many times, I wished I was shorter sometimes, especially as they keep shrinking the space on the plane and you want to cross your lips, you can't. You're going to be into the other person's face by the time you've got your foot over. Uh, uh, there are so many things in which, but then there are times when you want to reach to the top and my wife says, I can't get that, and so I'll just reach up and pick it up. And so she says, oh, I wished I was that bit taller. And then there are other times when you're in a crowd, and you look, and you can see over. But when you're short, you can get through. And you can, I mean, there's so many differences, aren't there? The only things are physiological. But there's nothing about us that makes a difference. Now, I'm going to change that to color, race, creed, culture. Other than the color, race, creed, culture... There's no difference. We're all physiologically the same. Which means Jesus is interested in us. Jesus is interested in our background. Jesus is interested where we are. He's interested in what we do. Now the other uh, interesting thing about this man is later in the scriptures, Jesus says, this man of Abraham, which means he was a... So, yeah, pretty close, wasn't it? He was a Jew. He was part of the family of Israel. And so, uh, he was discounted because he was a tax collector. And a chief tax collector. Oh, don't we like the ATO? Don't we just love them? We're looking forward to sending the check. Well, oh, we don't have checks anymore. We're looking forward to do the BSB or whatever you have to do and pass our tax on. And we all say, thank you, Jesus, for our government. Don't we? Come on now. <laughs> Well, you can imagine how much he was despised by his own people because he was a puppet of Rome. So this Zacchaeus, short, mm, Jew, mm, tax collector, mm, right down there, this man was already discounted as somebody to be around. So where do you think he would find the best place to see Jesus coming? Well, he wasn't going to have doors opened in the houses, was he? He wasn't going to give, be given the balcony and say, come on, Zacchaeus, come up here and watch Jesus coming into town with us. He heard Jesus was coming. And he thought, what am I going to do? If I want to see this man, I don't know him, but if I want to see him, what do I do? And he says, I'm going to get out on that road. I'm going to find a tree. Climb a tree. The second part of the story is a man and then a tree. Now, what's good about a tree? Come on. Sorry, there's branches. Yeah, what else? Tall. Yeah, what else? Shade. Yes, shade from sun, shade, shade from rain. Some of them produce fruit. Many of us had houses with timber. And if we didn't have trees, what would we have? Rubber. I don't know. Well, anyway, we're not going to go down there. Uh, but see, we take so much for granted of trees. But for this man, this tree was significant because even though people didn't like him, he got an opportunity to see Jesus. 
So he got up that sycamore tree. I could start singing the song now. Climbed into the sycamore tree. For, for the Lord he wanted to see. Now, he didn't know anything about what the Lord was going to do or who the Lord was or how the Lord... He'd possibly heard stories. Because again, Jewish oral tradition says you share stories. He would have heard it in the streets. He would have heard it as people were talking, not so much to him, but in the bustle as people were queued up to play. Tree. You know, when I was seven or eight, my brother and I went to our auntie and uncle's farm. I'm bringing out some repressed pain and struggle here. And they had an absolutely large peppercorn tree, absolutely covered with leaves and peppercorns. In fact, they used to be able to uh, park their implements underneath it. It was that big. And we decided we'd be pioneers, explorers, and we tied ropes around us and up we went. And he went first, and then I came, and then he went, and I went, and I... And then we got up so high, and he says, oh, this branch doesn't go any further. I'll jump over here, and then you jump. And so he jumped the meter, uh, and then I came. Well, there's another story after that. Uh, and after 58 years, I think the scars are fading as I fell onto a potato digger and split the side of my cheek and went right down to my mouth and I had stitches and I was sipping out of a straw for another week or two uh, until it all healed up. You can't see it now, but a tree brings a special memory back to me <laughs> as I start thinking about it and I think about uh, how wonderful they are as I drive around, but I think about that special moment. Take care with a tree, especially if you're a pioneer or uh, somebody who's going to climb it. Uh, do it the right way. Zacchaeus didn't need a tree for timber. He didn't need a tree for uh, building a house. He didn't need the tree for fruit. He needed it for cover and for height. He needed it so that he wouldn't be as obvious, but that he could see Jesus. And then this next part is the request. I find this one the most amazing. Jesus was walking along and he had people all around him. There were people on the street. There were people with him, people who'd been healed, disciples. There were people he, I'm sure he was going to see. And when you know that this is Luke chapter 19, we're coming very close to Calvary. And there were lots of things that Jesus was going to do before he went to Calvary, before he died, before he had his resurrection. And here is an incredible account where Jesus walks down this road, looks up a tree. Now, don't ask me how this happens, but Jesus knew. He looks up the tree and he says, Zacchaeus, come down because I'm going to your house. It was like a command. What do you think you would have done? If he came past and you were hiding in a tree and Jesus looked up to you and said, come down, Marge, come down, Roderick, come down, Jack, what do you think you would have done? Tried to hide further behind the leaves? <laughs> this man that people didn't like, this man who was despised, this man who was short, this man who didn't have anyone around him that he could have nudged in and got in the front of the crowd, this man up a tree, Jesus looks up and says, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to your place. That's a powerful passage. You know what it tells me? He knows us. He knows where we are at any moment. He sees us. You may not want to be seen today, but he sees you. You may want to hide away from some of the things that have happened in your life, but he sees you. He loves you. He knows you, and he wants to come to your home. Now, for Zacchaeus, it was his home. But you know the place he came to dwell was his heart. Now, we can't invite uh, Jesus to our home but we can invite Jesus into our heart, just like Zacchaeus. Now, I love in the scriptures where it says, and salvation came to Zacchaeus' home. Because if you know the name of Jesus in the Aramaic Hebrew, it means salvation. 
So it's a little play on words. Salvation came to Zacchaeus' home today. Well, that's Jesus. He actually came to his house. But more than that, more than that was the experience of salvation. More than that was the experience of forgiveness. It was so tangible for Zacchaeus. So real. Not only did he say, I'll pay back, but if I've stolen any, if I've cheated anybody, I'll pay back four times. It was such a revelation for this man of what Jesus was doing in his life that he wanted to give back and give back in such a way that it hurt because he was a wealthy man. And I love the fact that it's not just Zacchaeus. If you read the scriptures, and especially in that verse uh, 10, I think it says, Salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. Verse 9. For the Son of Man did not come to seek and to save. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Now, friends, this morning... Some of you have heard this gospel message many times and you're going, gosh, Colonel, this is such an old message. Why would you come here and teach it to me? Because you know what I've learned over my years? We forget so quickly. We forget that Jesus loves us. We forget that Jesus knows us. We forget that Jesus sees us. And he says, I want to live in your heart. I want to be with you always. So this morning, friends, I'm not going to keep drilling because I know that means you're boring longer and longer. Uh, I am going to come in for a landing. And the landing is, with the help of the uh, musicians who sang it earlier, he knows my name. He knows my every thought. But I want to finish it with this. He knows the plans he had for you says Jeremiah. They're plans for a future and a hope when we give our life over to him. When we ask him to forgive us. When we ask him to cleanse us. When we ask him to come into our hearts and to be our Lord and our Savior. Some of you may have done this a hundred times, a thousand times, but this morning I'm going to invite you just to pray the prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me. I do it every morning. I'm tainted by the world every day. Some of the attitudes that come on the radio, in the news, in the things, sometimes I'm listening to politicians and I'm starting to agree with them and then I have to stop because what I think they're saying is wrong. And I'm starting to agree. And I realize that's not the spirit of Christ in me. And I want to be clean every day, so I ask him to cleanse me every day of any sins of omission or commission. I want to be clean before him. I don't know about you this morning. I don't know if you've ever accepted him as your Lord and Savior, but if you haven't, we have a place of prayer at the back in here that I invite you to come. And maybe this morning you just want to stand in solidarity. Maybe this morning you want to ask this Jesus who sees you. You may want to respond to this Jesus who sees you as you are and wants to come and dwell in your heart. And you might just want to come and say, Lord Jesus, do that in my life. I invite you to come and stand with me. We're going to sing these words and you stand with me. You can stand where you are if you like. But as you do this morning, just know that Jesus sees you. He knows you. He loves you. He has a salvation plan for you. Please start singing when the time's right. Thank you. You respond. God bless you. I have a
responding to you, Jesus, who calls us by name. You know us each individually. You know our situations, our circumstances, our concerns, and our joys. And Father, you, through Jesus, ask to come to our place, into our heart. And Father, may we have an open door for Jesus this morning. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because you have done an incredible work in our world and you continue to do that work every day. So I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will have been acceptable in your sight, my rock and my redeemer. Bring honor to your name and instruction to your people this day. Accept the offering, accept our life. Use us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We're going to invite you to join us as we sing out.